it can be very challenging on your relationships when your moods go from low, 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 low to high, 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 high. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Rethink ADHD. Uh, today, I wanna talk about things that ADHD can be mistaken for, because I realize most of you are trying to figure out if you have ADHD or something else going on. Uh, some of you may already have a diagnosis that you don't agree with, or you know, any number of things might be happening. So ADHD is often misdiagnosed as a few different things because of the emotional dysregulation piece that can happen with ADHD and the impulsivity that can happen with ADHD. And there are several other disorders that may mirror that. And so I want you to be informed and when you go and talk to your provider and you hear these words spoken to you, you know what they mean. Um, so the first thing that ADHD can be misdiagnosed as, and this is very common actually, is bipolar disorder. So there are two different kinds of bipolar disorder. I'm not gonna go through the whole DSM criteria, DSM-5 criteria. You can Google that if you want to. I'm gonna give like a real high level or overview. So there's two kinds of bipolar disorder, bipolar one and bipolar two. I know, challenging. Uh, the main difference between bipolar one and bipolar two is in bipolar one, you have manic episodes and in bipolar two, you have hypomanic episodes. And so mania is, a, is an elevated state. Most of the time when you see a bipolar patient coming in to their doctor to ask for help, it's not when they're manic. It's when they're depressed. So there's the, it's called bipolar because there are two poles, the manic pole and the depressive pole. When they switch to that side, that's usually when they come in and they, they feel terrible and they want help. Mania in particular is, like I said, a state of being elevated in in yourself these these are folks who they feel great you know if you ever talk to someone with bipolar disorder disorder when they are manic they feel almost like a euphoria they feel like they are you know they may say things like i am the queen of england and um i have i'm wealthy i have all the money i'm a millionaire they have this may have these perceptions of themselves that don't make sense to those of us that are still kind of on terra firma but for them these are very real experiences a great great example of this in pop culture if you have access to it um is modern love the episode with anna hathaway is an amazing example of bipolar disorder so you kind of see her have she's in the store and she's feeling good she has this sparkly outfit on and she's like imagining everyone else dancing around her she is feeling at her best the challenge with mania though is actually in the process of feeling your best, your ability to assess risk and have restraint is very limited. So folks that are in manic episodes can do things that get them in jail. They can buy things that make no sense and are extremely beyond their level of finances. They can empty their savings, their retirement fund, uh, because they in that moment, they don't have the ability to control that. Um, and so it can be very challenging on your relationships when your moods go from low, 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 low to high, 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 high. So that's bipolar one. Bipolar two is a little bit milder. Both of them are going to have depression, but hypomania tends not to be, I just emptied my savings account and bought a yacht and I live in the middle of the United States, nowhere near water. Like those decisions don't tend to happen in hypomania. Usually with hypomania, we're, when we're assessing this, this is, we're thinking about things that have happened over four, three or four consecutive days where the feeling of elevated self is persistent on nearly every day for most of the day. That's a hypomanic state versus a manic state where you're, you're looking at symptoms that should per persist for at least a week of being high elevated, you know, I'm the queen of England, I'm gonna buy this yacht and all of those things, just things that just seem very irrational. Um, and hypo, so mania is over a week, hypomania is over three days, consecutive days where you're feeling this elevated sense of self um, every day for nearly all the time, That those days. Um, and so ADHD can be mistaken for bipolar one because Part of ADHD is the emotional dysregulation. And when people see you go from, you know, 
high to low or anything like that, they may think, oh, this is, this is bipolar. I'm looking at someone who ships back and forth. The main distinction though that I've seen with ADHD and bipolar, um, and bipolar one or two, is that usually with bipolar patients, there's no triggering event. It just happens. They don't, they don't like, something doesn't happen to make them feel great and as a result of that, they start to have mania. Or something terrible doesn't happen and as a result of that, they have depression. It's usually very unprompted, just the body, just cert the mind just cycling through different emotions with no apparent triggers. Whereas for ADHD, the emotional dysregulation tends to be in response to something. Something, something happened, maybe you didn't clean up and someone criticized you, you're having a hard time keeping up with all of your day-to-day -day tasks, you're falling behind in work, you may get depressed. You know, something great is happening, you're doing well, you feel you know, proud of yourself for accomplishing something, and so you feel great. So the emotional dysregulation piece is the same for both categories, AD, bipolar and ADHD, but they are a bit different in that bipolar disorder is really focused on the timeline, so a week or three or so days, and then usually there's no trigger to it. Now that's not to say that people that have bipolar disorder don't get triggered by life and day-to-day -day events. That's not what I'm saying. That absolutely can happen. We're all human beings. But it's a little bit different with ADHD. Usually the ADHD symptoms of emotional dysregulation are not persistent over multiple days or even weeks to be classified as a manic or hypomanic state, even if the person that has ADHD is also experiencing depression. So that's the main difference there. The second thing that ADHD can be mistaken for uh, is borderline personality disorder, or you may hear this referred to as BPD. And the reason, so part of the, the experience with borderline personality disorder, the characteristics of this is they tend to have very unstable relationships. So a lot of that is due to black and white thinking. You're either all good or all bad. And they tend to have impulsivity issues with you know controlling their impulses. Um, so you'll see someone with really unstable relationships socially, romantically, you know, they're, they're very black and white. They can have depersonalization where they actually feel themselves leaving their body as if they're watching themselves from, you know, some other plane. Um, and with that also comes a lot of emotional highs and lows. And so when you're talking about ADHD symptoms, what you may see with per people with ADHD is that their relationships might be challenged by their ADHD, depending upon the person that they're with and you know to what degree that person has reached a level of compassion and understanding. Their relationships can be challenged by ADHD, but it's not the levels of instability that you often see with borderline personality disorder. Typically, uh, these are like, you know, maybe your spouse or your friend or your roommate, they don't like that you don't clean up and you leave the cabinets open. That's my personal thing. I, I will leave the cabinets open all day long. <laughs> um, maybe that's the strain, but ultimately the core of the relationship remains intact. Um, so you can see individuals get misdiagnosed with either of those things. The third thing that you see really often is generalized anxiety disorder. And with generalized anxiety, it's not really if you or don't, do you or don't you have anxiety? It's really, did the chicken or the egg come first? So oftentimes when we're talking about ADHD and how to treat it and whether or not we've got the diagnosis correct, we're thinking about, okay, is this anxiety the result of having ADHD symptoms and having the stress of trying to adjust to a neurotypical environment? Or is this clean anxiety and the anxiety itself is causing inattentiveness? That's the main thing that has to happen. And what you find with individuals with ADHD, their anxiety oftentimes gets significantly better once their ADHD is being treated properly. So you can see that, okay, this anxiety was associated with or was a side effect of the ADHD as opposed to being a unique individual diagnosis. Um, and so when you're talking to your doctor, those are the kinds of things that are going through their mind. So we're, we think about, you, if you look in the DSM-5, a lot of these diagnoses are about time. How long have the symptoms been around? 
and severity. How persistent is this and how much of an impact is this happening on the person's life? In the case of borderline and bipolar disorder, it can be very dramatic, including you may go to jail, you may get into physical altercations with people because you cannot control your emotional impulses. Um, it's, it's a very dramatic experience. And again, with bipolar disorder, oftentimes in the face of not really having a trigger that you can identify, which is different from ADHD, where oftentimes we are responding to something in our environment. Now, who, you know, depending on who you're around, that, that response may be deemed appropriate or inappropriate. That's a whole nother conversation that's very culturally dependent, but that it's still attached to some kind of stimulus in the environment. Um, so that's the main thing. So it's, again, the things that can be misdiagnosed is our bipolar, borderline personality disorder, and um, generalized anxiety. And the generalized anxiety is, again, chicken before the egg, which one came first. So I'm, I want you all to know that because when you're talking to your provider and you're interacting with the mental health system, you are your biggest advocate. And I want you as a member of this community to be armed with the language to understand what your provider is saying and also to understand what parts of your story, your lived experience need to be clarified so that it doesn't lead them down this path, if that makes any sense. Um, for a special note for individuals that are people of color, our challenge in mental health systems is tenfold, okay? Um, oftentimes there can be cultural misalignments within the mental health system. And as a person of color who may experience anger or frustration, that can sometimes lead to a diagnosis of bipolar or borderline long before anyone ever considers ADHD. And a lot of that comes from the stigma that impacts the mental health system and mental health care workers. So it's important for you to choose a healthcare provider that you feel will understand your lived experience and also not bring their own bias or you know perceptions into the therapeutic relationship. They're really going to take time to get to know you and hear your story and help you get to a conclusive diagnosis. Whether that be ADHD or it's something else, the main point here is to get you the care and the support that you deserve. So that's it. Those are the three things that anxiety or ADHD can be mistaken for. And I would love to hear, you know, has anyone been diagnosed, anyone watching these videos been diagnosed or had someone say something to them about any of these other disorders and you just felt like it didn't fit? I'd love to have that conversation with you in the comments. Subscribe and like this video. Hit the little bell so you can get notifications when new videos are posted. Um, and we do these, we're going to start doing, we're doing them once a week, but eventually we'll start doing them twice a week. So hang in there. I'm trying to get my ADHD together, just like you probably are. And so I'm going to figure out the schedule that works best for me and for my team. But that's it. I hope this video was helpful. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date. And comment your experience. I'd love to talk to you. See you next week. Bye.